This is the Genie SX180. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity, which differ significantly to the training they have received, should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. The maximum working height is 56.7 metres. The maximum platform height is 54.8 metres. The maximum horizontal reach of the machine is 24.38 metres. The maximum load carrying capacity in the platform is 340 kilograms. The maximum wind speed is 12.5 metres per second. The maximum height of the machine when in the stowed position is 3.05 metres. The maximum horizontal reach of the machine is 24.38 metres. The width of the machine with the axles fully retracted is 2.49 metres. The width of the machine with the axles fully extended is 5.03 metres. The length of the machine in the stow position is 16.18 metres. The length of the machine when it is stowed for transport is 13 metres. The length of the wheelbase with the axles extended is 4.72 metres. The length of the wheelbase with the axles retracted is 5.03 metres. The ground clearance of the machine is 38.1 centimetres. The turning radius with the axles extended and retracted, please refer to the operator's manual for these distances. The turntable rotation is 360 degrees continuous. The weight of the machine is 24,948 kilograms. However, machine weights can vary with option configurations. Check the serial label for the specific machine weight. The maximum slope rating with the machine in the stowed position for the counterweight uphill and downhill is 35% or 19 degrees for side slope is 25% or 14 degrees. Please note that slope rating is always subject to ground conditions and adequate traction. For floor loading information refer to the operator's manual. The maximum tyre load is 13,381 kilograms. With the axles extended the occupied floor pressure is 856 kilograms per meter squared. The occupied floor pressure with the axles retracted is 1,644 kg per meter squared. Please note that floor loading information is approximate and does not incorporate different option configurations. It should only be used with adequate safety factors. The platform rotation is 160 degrees. If a malfunction is discovered, the machine must immediately be isolated, tagged and removed from service. Locate the thorough examination certificate ensuring that the last six monthly inspection has been carried out within the last six months. Be sure that the operator's safety and responsibilities manuals are complete, legible and in the storage container locked in the platform. Decals are located around the machine. Familiarise yourself with the different decals ensuring that you understand items such as safe working load wind speeds, floor loadings, crushing points. Check for hydraulic oil leaks and proper oil levels. Check for engine oil leaks and proper oil level. Check the following components or areas for damage, improperly installed or missing parts and any unauthorised modifications. 
electrical components, wiring and electrical cables, hydraulic hoses, fittings, cylinders and manifolds, drive and turntable motors and drive hubs, tyres and wheels. The type of tyre fitted is a foam filled tyre. This will be indicated by a bolt opposite the valve in the tyre. Engines and related components. Rotation sensors. Steer and axle sensors. Alarms and beacons. Nuts, bolts and other fasteners. Platform entry mid-rail lanyard anchorage points. Always ensure that you are wearing the correct personal protective equipment in accordance with your risk assessment and method statement. Number 1. Square end tyre. Number 2. Ground controls. 3. Boom. 4. Jib boom. 5. Platform. 6. Circle end tyre. 7. Platform controls. 8. Sliding mid rail. 9. Manual storage container. 10. Lanyard anchorage points. 11. Foot switch. Number 1. LCD readout screen. 2. Engine speed select button. 3. Red emergency stop button. 4. Glow plug button. 5. Key switch. This has three positions, off, ground or platform selection. 6. Engine start button. 7. Platform level up and down buttons. 8. Jib boom up and down buttons. 9. Boom extend and retract buttons. 10. Circuit breaker for system circuit. 11. Alarm. 12. Bypass recovery key switch. 13. Platform rotate right button. 14. Platform rotate left button. 15. Jib boom rotate right button. 16. Jib boom rotate left button. 17. High speed function enable button. 18. Low speed function enable button. 19. Turntable rotate left button. 20. Turntable rotate right button. 21. Emergency power button. 22. Boom up and down buttons. 23. LCD screen control buttons. 24. Jib rotator indicator operating envelope. On the LCD readout screen, A is the low fuel indicator, B engine oil pressure indicator, C water temperature indicator, D emergency power indicator, E engine RPM indicator, F hour meter. Number 1 horn button, 2 platform not level indicator light. 3. Machine on incline indicator light. 4. Lower boom indicator light. 5. Raise or retract boom indicator light. 6. Is used for optional equipment. 7. Generator switch with indicator light. 8. Emergency power switch. 9. Glow plug switch with indicator light. 10. Engine start switch with indicator light. 11. Engine idle select switch with indicator light. There are two options, rabbit for high idle, turtle for low idle speeds. 12. Jib rotate indicator light for the operating envelope. 13. Platform overload indicator light. 14. Power indicator light. 15. Check engine indicator light. 16. Low fuel indicator light. 17. Fault indicator light. 18. Red emergency stop button.
19. Proportional control handle for drive function and thumb rocker for steer functions. 20. Steer mode select switch with indicator lights. There are four modes of steer. Front two wheel steering. Rear two wheel steering. Crab steering. All wheel steering. 21. Dual axis proportional control handle for jib boom up and down and rotate left and right. 22. Drive speed select switch with indicator light. Machine on incline symbol is low range operation for the machine used on inclines. Machine on level surface symbol is high range operation for maximum drive speed. 23. Single axis proportional control handle for boom extend and retract function. 24. Axle extend and retract switch with indicator lights. 25. Drive enable switch with indicator light. 26. Dual axis proportional control handle for boom up or down and turntable rotate left and right functions. 27. Platform rotate switch. 28. Platform level switch. Function tests. These are designed to discover any malfunctions before putting the MUPE into service. You must follow the step-by-step -step instructions to test all MUPE functions. If you do find a fault, isolate, tag and report the machine. Do not attempt any repairs to the machine. Hydraulic ramping. Your machine may have hydraulic ramping built into it by design. This means that the machine may not stop immediately when a controller is released. Before carrying out your function test, select a test area that is firm, level and free of any obstructions. If this is not the case, report to your supervisor or manager and have the machine moved to a more suitable location. At the ground control station, put the key into the ground control. Pull out the red emergency stop button. Turn the key switch to ground control. The LCD screen should now display no error messages. If the machine is equipped with a beacon, this should flash. To start the engine, turn the key to the ground control position. Ensure that both the platform control and the ground control red emergency stop buttons are pulled out to the on position. In cold conditions of 10 degrees and below, Push and hold the glow plug button for 10 to 20 seconds before starting the engine. Once you have done this, then press the engine start button. Press and hold the glow plug button. In the screen you will see a countdown has started. When the countdown reaches zero, then you can start the engine. To test the emergency stop, push in the red emergency stop button to the off position. The engine should now turn off and no functions should operate. Pull out the red emergency stop button and restart the engine. To test the extendable axles, this test should be carried out with the axles in the retracted position. At the ground controls, push and hold one of the function enable speed select buttons and push the boom up button. The boom should raise to 10 degrees above horizontal and then stop. The boom should not raise above the limit switch until both axles are fully extended. Now push and hold the function enable speed select button and push the boom down button. The boom should now return to the lower stowed position. Push and hold the function enable button and press the boom extend button. Because the axles are not extended the boom should not extend. Now turn the ground control key to the platform controls. Climb into the platform using the mid-entry gate. Attach your lanyard and carabiner in accordance with any risk assessments and safe systems of work. Start the machine using the starting procedure and then move the drive control handle in the forward direction and at the same time 
push the axle extend button. The machine should drive and the axles should now extend. Please note the indicator light will flash while the axles are moving and stay on when the axles are fully extended. Now return to the ground controls. Turn the key back to ground control, push and hold the function enable button and push the boom up and down button. The boom should now raise and lower normally. Now hold the function enable button and push the boom extend button and boom retract button. The boom should now extend and retract normally. Do not press and hold the function enable button. Attempt to activate each boom and platform function button. As you are not holding the function enable button, no boom and platform function should operate. Now press and hold the function enable button and activate each boom and platform function button. All boom and platform functions should be operated through a full cycle. The descent alarm should sound when the boom is lowering. Testing the tilt sensor. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until turntable level sensor X direction appears. The LCD screen should now display the angle in degrees. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until turntable level sensor Y direction appears. The LCD screen should now display the angle in degrees. Push one of the LCD screen buttons until platform level sensor degrees appears. The LCD screen should display the angle in degrees. Testing the operating envelope. Simultaneously press the two LCD screen control buttons, which are the plus and the minus buttons, to activate status mode. Now press one of the LCD screen control buttons until primary angle degrees is displayed. Now raise the boom and observe the LCD screen. The LCD screen will display the boom angle to gravity in degrees. Now press one of the LCD screen control buttons shown until length sensor extension centimeters is displayed. Now extend the boom and observe the LCD screen. The LCD screen will now display the string pot extension length. Testing the jib rotate limit. At the ground controls, press and hold the function enable button and press either the jib rotate right or jib rotate left button. Now rotate the jib boom in line with the boom assembly. Press and hold the function enable button and press the boom extend button. Extend the boom approximately 9.14 cm. Now rotate the jib to the right. The jib rotation should come to a stop at 30 degrees from the centre line of the boom assembly. Repeat the process by rotating the jib to the left. Again, the jib rotation should come to a stop at 30 degrees from the centre line of the boom assembly. At the ground controls, turn the key switch to platform control. Climb into the platform, attach your carabiner to the anchorage point provided by the manufacturer. Push in the platform red emergency stop button to the off position. The engine should turn off and no function should operate. Pull out the red emergency stop button and now restart the engine. At the platform, test the tilt sensor alarm. Push a button such as the engine RPM button on the fuel select button. The alarm should sound at the platform control. This indicates that the tilt sensor alarm is working in the platform. You will notice in the platform at the bottom there is a foot switch. Push in the ready stop switch to the off position. 
Now pull out your rudimentary stop button, but do not start the engine. Press down on the foot switch and attempt to start the engine by pushing the engine start button. As your foot is on the foot switch, the engine should not start. Take your foot off the foot switch and start the engine. To check the function of the foot switch, do not press down on the foot switch and test each machine function. As your foot is not pressed on the foot switch, no functions should operate. To test machine functions, ensure that your foot switch is fully pressed down and activate each machine function control handle, toggle switch or button. All functions should operate through a full cycle. Steering controls are controlled on the thumb rocker switch on the proportional control handle. Your machine has four modes of steering. Square end blue arrow steer. Circle end yellow arrow steer. Crab steer. Coordinated steer. Ensure you cycle through all modes of steering to ensure that the steering select is working correctly. Test drive and braking. Press down the foot switch and slowly move the drive steer control handle in the direction indicated by the blue and yellow arrows. The machine should now move in the direction indicated by the blue and yellow arrows. Please note the brakes must be able to hold the machine on any slope it is able to climb. When bringing the drive controller back to the centre position, the machine will come to an abrupt stop. Test the drive enable system. Press down the foot switch and lower the boom to the stowed position. Rotate the turntable until the boom moves past one of the circle end tyres. On the control panel, the drive enable indicator light should illuminate while the boom is anywhere in that range shown. Now try to move the drive steer control handle off centre. No drive function should operate. Push and hold the drive enable button and slowly move the drive steer control handle off centre. The drive function should now operate. When the drive enable system is in use, the machine may drive in the opposite direction that the drive and steer control handle is moved. Use the colour coded directional arrows on the platform control and the drive chassis to identify the direction of travel. Please note if the drive steer control handle is not moved within two seconds of pushing the drive enable button, the drive function will not operate. Testing the limited drive speed. Press down the foot switch and raise the boom to 10 degrees above the horizontal. Now slowly move the drive control handle to the full drive position. The maximum achievable drive speed with the primary boom raised should not exceed 18 centimeters per second. Please note the machine will travel 12 meters in 68 seconds. Now lower the boom to the stowed position. Now extend the boom 1.2 meters. Again, slowly move the drive control handle to the full drive position. Again, the maximum achievable drive speed with the primary boom raised should not exceed 18 centimeters per second. Now raise the boom to 50 degrees above the horizontal and extend the boom to the maximum length. Now slowly move the drive control handle to the full drive position. The maximum achievable drive speed at this position with the boom fully extended should not exceed 4.5 centimeters per second. The machine will travel 12 meters in 270 seconds. If the drive speed exceeds these limits, immediately isolate and tag and report the machine. The machine must not be used. Test the lift drive select function. Press down the foot switch. 
Now move the drive control handle off center and activate a boom function control handle. As the drive function has now been activated, no boom functions should operate, but the machine will move in the direction indicated on the control panel. Testing the drive tilt cutout. Press down the foot switch and with the boom fully stowed, drive the machine onto a slope where the chassis angle is greater than 3 degrees along the Y axis. The machine should continue to drive. Return the machine to level ground and extend the boom approximately 91.4 cm. Drive the machine onto a slope where the chassis angle is greater than 3 degrees along the X axis, side to side. The machine should stop once the machine reaches 3 degrees of chassis tilt. Retract the boom to the stow position or drive in the opposite direction. The machine should drive. To test the auxiliary controls, turn the key switch to ground control and shut the engine off. Pull out the red emergency stop button to the on position. Simultaneously push and hold the auxiliary power button and push each boom function button or toggle switch. All boom functions should operate. To conserve battery power, test each function through a partial cycle. Testing the platform auxiliary controls. Shut off the engine and pull out the red emergency stop button to the on position. Now press down the foot switch and simultaneously press and hold the auxiliary power button and activate each function control handle, toggle switch or button. All boom and steer functions should operate. To conserve battery power, test each function through a partial cycle. The operating envelope indicator lights are located in the top left of the platform control panel. Operating envelope indicator lights. The operating envelope indicator lights will come on to notify the operator that a function has been interrupted and an action is required by the operator. Raise the boom indicator light flashing. To continue extending the boom, raise the boom until the indicator light is off. Retract the boom indicator light flashing. To continue lowering the boom, retract the boom until the indicator light is off. Machine not level indicator light flashing. The tilt alarm will be sounding when this light is flashing. Move the machine to a firm level surface. Platform not level indicator light flashing. The tilt alarm will be sounding when this light is flashing. The platform level toggle switch will only work in the direction that will level the platform. Level the platform until the indicator light is off. Platform out of level 15 degrees volt. If the ground control display shows platform level 15 degrees volt and the platform level controls do not work, the machine will need to be recovered by trained and authorised personnel or a qualified service technician. Contact AFI Group. Platform out of level P22 code. Bypass key position to be used to level the platform if the ground control display shows the platform out of level and the platform level controls do not work and P22 is indicated in the LCD. To operate, turn the engine off at the ground controls. Turn the main key switch to the ground control. Open up the canopy and remove the key from the main key switch and insert the key into service bypass. Turn the key once down into P22 position. Now using the emergency power, operate the platform level button to level the platform. Turn the service bypass key switch to the run position, remove the key from the service bypass and insert the key back into the main key switch. Push in and then pull out the red emergency stop button. 
If the P22 code is still visible, tag and remove the machine from service until the fault has been corrected by a qualified service technician. To secure the machine, ensure the machine is fully lowered. Both emergency stops are fully in and the key is turned to the off position and removed to isolate the machine. Contained within the black box, you will find the instructions for the use of the Genie OPA. Please read the manual thoroughly before using the operator protective alarm. Users should seek to minimise the risks of entrapment or crushing when devising a suitable method statement for any particular job, but particularly if working close to overhead structures. Before using the MUP each day, the operator should check the OPA system to ensure there are no visible signs of damage to any part of the system. After starting the MUP up, the OPA will automatically test itself. If functioning correctly, the MUP will start as normal. If not, the OPA will emit an SOS signal, which is three long beeps and three short beeps, and the MUP will not start. Please note, if this SOS signal is sounding, the MUP must be isolated, tagged, and reported to your supervisor. The OPA is automatically enabled when the operator's foot is placed on the foot pedal and it is disabled when the foot is removed. The operator should note that the MUPE's lift capacity will be reduced by the weight of the OPA. This is 8 kilograms in total. The OPA is activated by pressure on a sensitive strip. If pressure is applied to the sensitive strip, the MUPE functions will stop immediately and the alarm will sound intermittently. If the operator is able to remove the pressure, they can then reset the OPA using the blue reset switch and then restart the MUPE and continue working as normal. If pressure is applied to the sensitive strip for more than 10 seconds, the alarm will change to a continuous sound indicating to those on the ground that the operator may need to be rescued.